talking about how to multiply um, fractions that have negatives in them. And we're going to do a quick review by going over addition. So um, let's talk about the rules for when you add with negatives and you have the same sign. When you have negatives, if you have the same sign in both of them, or if you have positives in the same sign, you add and keep the sign. So for example, negative 6 plus negative 5 is negative 11. And with negative 2 and a half plus negative 5 and 2 thirds, we're also going to add those two fractions and keep the sign that's negative. So we know we're going to add. And we know that the sign is going to be negative. Now at this point, we don't worry about the signs. We do this as a regular addition problem with fractions. We're no longer worrying about negatives and positives and all that. And we just do a regular addition problem. And when we're done, we'll make sure that we put a negative in front of the answer. So we're going to get common denominators. So I'm multiplying 1 half by 3 over 3, and I'm multiplying 2 thirds by 2 over 2. And then I'm going to add those together to get 7 and 7 6. And I know the answer needs to be negative, and I also need to simplify this to negative 8 and 1 6. When we add and we have different signs, we're actually going to subtract the two numbers and keep the sign of whichever we have more of. So for example, 6 plus negative 5 is going to be a positive 1 because we have more positives than negatives. If we add something like 5 and 21, or 2 over 21, and negative 5 and 13 18, we're actually going to subtract, and our answer is going to be negative. So I like to write down if I'm going to add or subtract, and whether the answer is going to be positive or negative. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the problem like a regular fraction problem, not worrying about negatives and positives. So the next thing I need to think about is which one of these fractions is bigger. And um, I may not know until I get a common denominator. Sometimes you can't tell. In this case, you can tell it's pretty clear. Since the 5 and 3 18 is the bigger amount, we want to make sure that we take away the smaller amount from it. We're going to get common denominators. So this is a great time for us to use our prime factorization method. I'm actually not going to take these all the way down to primes. I am now going to start to showing um, what factors they have in common. So here I know that 18 is 3 times 6. And I know that 6 won't go into 21, so that's not a common factor. But I do know they both have 3. So I'm just going to show the factors they have in common. And then the ones they don't have in common are the factors we multiply the other ones by. So now I'm going to multiply um, the 13 18 by 7 over 7 because that's the factor we don't have from 21. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom of the other fraction, or the numerator and denominator of the other fraction, by 6 over 6. So they both now have a 3, a 6, and a 7. At this point, they don't have to be prime as long as we can quickly tell what we need to multiply by. So when we do that, we're going to end up with 5 and 91 over 126. minus 5 and 12 over 126. When I subtract, I'm going to get, when I subtract, I get 79 over 126. I'm going to double check to see what sign I need. And I saw earlier that since I have more negatives than I do positives, that my answer should be a negative. Next, we're going to talk about multiplication and division. We're actually focusing on multiplication today, but multiplication and division have the same rules. So we'll go ahead and talk about them together. So does anybody know, remember from our integer unit what well, the sign will be if we're multiplying or dividing and we have the same sign? 
So when you multiply with same signs, you're going to get a positive answer. When you multiply or divide with different signs, you're going to get a negative answer. When you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. Um, however, you always want to cross cancel if possible. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to prove to you why cross canceling works. Because if you can grasp why cross canceling works, it'll be easier to remember that you can cross cancel. The more we understand why, the less we have to memorize. So I want you to kind of watch and see if you, you can follow what I'm doing. So first of all, since we know that multiplying fractions means you multiply straight across, we know that this is the same as negative 22 times 40 over 25 times 30. That's going to be the same thing as 40 times negative 22 over 25 times 30. Let me try that again. So that's negative 22 times 40 over 25 times 33 is the same thing as 40 times negative 22 over 25 times 33. So we know that if that a times b is the same thing as b times a. So I can change the order of negative 22 times 40 to 40 times negative 22, and it means the same thing. It's going to be the same value. So I can change that order. I can also change the order of the denominators, and this is based on the commutative property of multiplication, which states it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in as long as you have multiplication, all multiplication. So now, since I took two different fractions and put them together to get one here, I can do the same thing but by taking a one fraction and breaking it up into two different fractions. So I'm going to break this up into 40 over 25 times negative 22 over 33. All right, so now we know that 40 over 25 can be simplified. We know that 5 will divide into 40 over 25, right? 5 is the greatest common factor. So if we divide both of those by 5, of course, we get 8 fifths. So what I'm showing you here is that you can simplify 40 over 25 if it's on top of each other. We know that. We know that when we have a fraction, you can simplify it by dividing the top and bottom by the same number, right, to simplify. Well, that's why we can simplify 25 and 40 with cross-canceling because ultimately they can be written on top of each other. Now, we can do the same thing with the 22 over the 33. And don't focus right now on the negative so much. I'm not really concerned about that. We're just understanding where cross-canceling comes from. So here, I can divide by the greatest common factor, which is 11. So I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 11, which is going to give me 2 thirds, or since this is negative, negative 2 thirds. Now, if we come back to the original problem, we're basically going to do the exact same thing I just did, but we're going to do it crisscross from each other instead of up and down. But it's the fact that we can move these around using the commutative pro property of multiplication that allows us to do cross-canceling. So it's the commutative property of multiplication that is the key to cross-canceling. So here, we can imagine 40 and 25 really would be on top of each other. And so we can divide by 5 and get our 8 and our 5 here. And we can imagine the 22 and the 33 on top of each other divide by 11. And we can get our 2 here and our 3 here. And that's where cross-canceling comes from.
So cross-canceling is where you look at numbers that are crisscrossed from each other in a multiplication problem. You can also see by this proof that this comes from multiplication. It doesn't work for addition, subtraction, or division. With multiplication, and the, because of the commutative property of multiplication, when we multiply two fractions, and here's the key, this is cross-canceling being explained. When we have two fractions that are being multiplied, we look at the numbers that are crisscrossed from each other, and we can divide by a greatest common factor and simplify the numbers crisscrossed from each other. And that makes our multiplication much, much easier. And if you have fractions that need to be simplified to start with, like on top of each other, that's fine as well. So you can simplify either on top of each other, like we saw when we had them on top of each other, or you can simplify crisscross from each other. And I've just proven why. When it comes to looking at negative and positive, the way you want to do that is first you just approach the problem as a regular fraction problem. Then when you get your answer, you think about whether the answer should be positive or negative. We have a negative fraction times a positive fraction, so we're going to have a negative answer. So 2 times 8 is 16, and 5 times 3 is 15. So this is going to be negative 1 and 1 15. You divide 15 into 16, it goes once with one left over. So the negative 22 over 25, that entire value is negative. The 40 over 33, that entire value is positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. So don't worry about the negatives when you're cross-canceling and all that. It'll just confuse you. Just when you do your final answer, when you figure your final answer, think about I have a negative times a positive, so my answer is negative. For our next problem, you're always going to change mixed numbers to improper fractions because you can't tell what the numerator is if you don't. So here, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, so I end up with negative 5 halves times negative 6 over 35. Negative 5 halves times negative 6 over 35. And we want to start by cross Canceling, you always want to cross cancel. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I will give you really, really big numbers, but if you don't cross cancel, it's going to be difficult. 5 goes into 5 once, it goes into 35 seven times. I'm going to multiply straight across. 1 times uh, 6 is 6. 2 times 7 is 14. Now I'm going to think about the sign of my answer. A negative times a negative is a positive, so my answer is positive. Okay, let me keep going. I also need to cross-cancel the 2 and the 6. So 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 3 times. And 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 7 is 7. Negative times negative is positive, so I end up with 3 7. Negative 1 and 2 thirds. Remember, we're going to do 3 times 1 plus 2 equals 5, and we put that over 3 change negative 1 and 2 thirds to an um, improper fraction. And then 5 times 3 plus 2 equals 17 fifths to change 3 and 2 fifths to an improper fraction. So I have negative 5 thirds times 17 fifths. And I'm going to cross cancel anywhere I can. In this case, the only place I can cross cancel is with the 5. 5 goes into 5 once. I'm multiplying a negative times a positive, so I end up with a negative answer. And 1 times 17 is 17, and 3 times 1 is 3. To change this back to a mixed number, I'm going to divide 3 into 17, which goes 5 times with a remainder of 2. So my answer is negative 5 and 2 thirds. We're going to change all these to improper fractions. All right, now everybody watch real quick. Just watch because I'm going to finish this up real fast. 9 goes into 27 three times. 
Now, nine, you want to check and see if they're going to 16, 27, or four. You check all of them because you can cross cancel with any of them on top, uh, this one, or way over here. Everybody hear that? You can cross cancel way over here if that's something nine will go into. Now, notice five won't go into any of these three numbers, but three will go into that three right there. So I can cross cancel again. Can't cross cancel anymore. So I end up with 64 on the top and 5 on the bottom. So that equals 12 and 4 fifths. And we have a negative times a positive times a negative. That's how you can think about it when you're working with fractions. Just think about it. Negative times positive times negative. And that's going to be a positive. Remember, if you have an even number of negatives, then your answer is positive. So we have a positive answer. Or you can think it through. Negative times positive is negative times a negative. 